Hey everyone, welcome back to your weekly market outlook. This is for the 20th to the 24th of November 2023. My name is Yoda. Let's get started with a quick promo code that you can use. It's Vito MA23. This is to double your deposit bonus. Uh, so make sure if you're depositing into your Okta trading accounts, use the code Vito MA23 to double your deposit bonus. This is valid until the 31st of December 2023. All right, so let's take a look at last week. It was a completely game-changing week in terms of risk sentiments and whatnot. I think we have a clear view, I think, or at least not I. Uh, the market does have a clear view of what the FOMC is likely going to be doing come December. So I don't think there's going to be in any interest rate hike. I think the FOMC is pretty much done for 2023. Why? Because if we take a look at the inflation number, it's uh, let's focus on the U.S. inflation number first. So headline inflation... A drop from 3.7 to 3.2 percent. Market was expecting 3.3 percent. This is 0.1 percent below the consensus. The core inflation or the core CPI year on year dropped down from 4.1 percent to 4 percent. The growth per month also dropped down from 0.4 percent growth per month to 0 percent growth per month. So we're not looking at any inflationary growth um, from the uh, CPI. The core CPI numbers um, also kind of dropped down a little bit in terms of the monthly growth, 0.3% to 0.2%. That's from the CPI numbers. Take a look at the PPI numbers. The PPI uh, month on month dropped from 0.1 to negative 0.5% growth per month, right? So we're looking at a significant drop in inflationary growth the core ppi dropped down from 0.3 percent sorry 0.2 percent to zero percent growth per month so we're looking at inflation slowing down from the con both the consumer side as well as the producer side you know giving no reason for the fomc to hike that 25 basis points in december so i think the market is clear from this numbers that yeah the fomc is pretty much done for uh 2023 life uh, life can go on you know recent is returning to the market you know everything can just move on as per se the other thing is the uk inflation number also dropped down significantly last last week i was talking hey that's a huge call asking for a two percent uh, drop in in headline inflation we got 2.1% drop. That's significant. We have seen a drop from 6.7% to 4.6%. And from memory, I don't think any major currency, any major economies has actually seen a such a drop within a month period, a 2.1% drop on a headline inflation. It's really something, you know, not to belittle, right? It's good. It is actually a tough, tough drop, a 2.1% drop. Uh, I'm still baffled by that number anyway. All right, so that's inflation from last week. Changes a lot of the market dynamics, which is something that we're going to go through uh, on the technicals. But for this week, what to focus on? I think the FOMC meeting minutes is definitely one to focus on. The RBA meeting minutes is also something to focus on. I think both from the RBA and the FOMC, uh, even though RBA just high interest rate, uh, I think we are expecting the same thing from both of them, that uh, they, they do expect inflation to kind of go down. And if they need to, they still uh, have the room to continue hiking. But more so from the FOMC, I think we should see a little bit of a note saying like, yeah, I think pausing is, is a good decision. We've seen inflation come off a little bit. Economics uh, is still growing strong, which is great. But yeah, I think those are going to be the comments from the uh, RBN and the FOMC. I expect a little bit more of a dovish call from both of them as well. Other than that, next week we are going to be looking at flash manufacturing uh, PMI as well as the flash services PMI from France, Germany, Eurozone, the US, as well as the UK. That's going to be compressed onto Thursday and Friday. All right. This is the dollar index. And this is something that I've started labeling because we are going to be running our new webinar series, the SMC ICT webinars. That's going to start on the 28th of November. It's going to be a five part webinars. You know, we're going to do that continuously. So the first three webinars for, um, November is going to be on the 28th, 29th, and the 30th. That's webinar one, two, three, and make sure you attend all five to be able to use 
all these techniques so that you can have a clean chart like what we have here this is so easy to read so let's take a look at the dollar index let me just explain this uh, we do have build up uh, a little bit of a buy side liquidity at 107 and that has been the primary resistance zone now if you guys have been wondering why i kept thinking about 107 because there's going to be a, a little bit of a buy side liquidity over there at 107 which is technically a little bit of a resistance zone building up for uh, the dollar index then the thing that happened here ever since uh, mid-October, we actually do have a little bit of a change of character. And the movement from the past two weeks has shown that the market has continuously created two break of structure, i.e. this is currently within a downtrend. So that's how we classify it for the dollar index this is technically in a downtrend we do have a little bit of an order block which is um building up at around 103 to 10350 and this is where the dollar index is currently located but given the current situation and combination with the ichimoku cloud we have transition back below the ichimoku cloud and this is the first time since august that price has transitioned back below the Ichimoku cloud. Obviously, the reverse is true for the Aussie USD, Euro USD, the Prime USD, which we'll cover in a minute. But for now, downtrend is intact on the dollar index at this point in time. There's no confusion. This is pure clarity. We have broken below 105 uh, from that CPI move last week. And it has actually broken, market is actually broken below 104 as well. So we do have a little bit more support coming in at 103, probably not as strong as that 105 level. This is currently a clear break to the downside. So we expect the US dollar to follow suit at least for the next couple of weeks that we expect the, uh, the US dollar to continue to weaken um, just because sentiment has returned into the market there's no more concern that the fomc needs to hike interest rate in december so this is probably a one-sided push at this point in time same thing with the aussie usd the first time this has transitioned back above the ishimoku cloud since august right we have at time of recording price is currently above 65.25 so we have actually broken through that 65 barrier that we have on the usd next up for this one here we we have a little bit of an order block at around 66 cents now if you are still confused that's completely fine we're going to cover all this on our webinar on the 28th of november so yeah we've got that order block at 66 cents at this point in time that's going to be your key resistance to watch out for this is currently tracking a little bit higher so the theme for this week is that we are looking for continued U.S. dollar weakness. We are looking at recovery in all the other major currencies. We have actually transitioned into a little bit of an uptrend. Uh, so the trend has shifted. We are no longer in that range bar market condition. We have shifted into an uptrend for Aussie USD. And what we're looking at here right now, the theme for this week is that if you see any dip in the market, and as long as it's traded above 65 cents, those are going to be a buy on the dip scenario for the Aussie USD. Same thing with the Euro USD. We're going to be looking for a little bit more of a buy on the dip scenario. Very close to a little bit of a resistance here. So we have a little bit of a buy side liquidity at around 1.0950. So I don't expect price to break down below 1.0850, which is um, where the weekly pivot is located, 1.0830. As long as price is trading above that weekly pivot, we're going to be looking for a buy on the dip scenario here. Uh, I think the market is going to be tracking higher towards 1.0950 and then resistance one at about 1.10. Yeah, potentially even closer to resistance two, which is at about 1.108 to 1.11 for the euro USD. So this one here is actually pretty straightforward. We have broken through um, two barriers that we have. The first barrier is at 1.0650, 1.07. Within that one run on that CPI night, we have we, we basically closed above 1.09 uh, for last week on the Euro USD. So yeah, the upside momentum is so strong. Any pullback, any dips to the down to the downside is likely going to be look, uh, at, at, looked at looked at at uh, looked at at trade looked at by traders <laughs> looked at by traders as a buying opportunity so buy on the dip on the aussie usd buy on the dip on the euro usd same thing with the pound usd this one here uh, you know probably going to be a little bit tougher because we didn't see that uh, a huge run on this one here just because we have to also that drop on the inflation as well uh from the uk but anyways this one has transitioned above the issue of cloud number one we have transitioned above one point 2350 which is critical we have a little bit of resistance 
at around 1.2550 and our mark swing high there if we break beyond that swing high this is going to be a this is going to be a break of structure then that's where we're likely going to be seeing further run to the upside for the pan usd but again similar scenario here as long as it's not traded below 1.24 any dips to the downside it's going to be buy on the dip strategy so the same thing for the aussie usd euro usd the pound usd we have so much clarity in the market right now we actually don't have a lot of confusion um we basically are tracking one way it's going to be buy on the dip uh, the momentum has shifted the trend has shifted this is now more of a bullish recovery on all these major currency pairs with the exception of the dollar japanese yen the dollar japanese yen hasn't started a new downtrend at this point in time this is still trading above that swing low that's already marked in the in the chart there we're still trading above 148.50 we're still trading above 148 the requirement for this one here is that we need to be breaking 148 for this one to be confirmed as a downtrend for the dollar japanese and this one is technically still in an uptrend it's kind of slowing down it is in a range by market condition it is currently trapped between 148.50 and 152 huge range but it is what it is so this is currently not trending anywhere this is the only exception uh, on the uh, major crosses here and we're not talking about Japanese yen strength here that's on a recovery this is actually dropping down because of US dollar weakness not because the Japanese yen is strong in general it's just that the US dollar is weaker against the Japanese yen following the CPI numbers from last week but it is what it is this is not trending anywhere this is actually in a range bar market condition which is also the same thing with gold take a look at the RSI for gold this is currently trapped between 40 and 60 and anything that's trapped between 40 and 60 means it's non-directional. This is actually a range by market condition. We have a little bit of a resistance at 1985, right? Support-wise, we have that range between 1930 and 1950, which is where price bounces off from uh, last week for for gold, right? We bounces off cleanly 1930. We bounce off 1930. Uh, transition back above 1950, but we cannot go beyond 1985. So we expect a little bit of a range bar market condition here. 1985 is still going to be a tough level to break. I don't expect gold to go above 2000. I also don't expect gold to actually be trading below 1930 at this point in time. So just make sure you know what you're doing with gold here. It's no longer a safe haven asset is no longer the the thing to look out for and you can see from the impact here for gold right if the fomc is bearish uh sorry uh it's, it's dovish right if we don't expect the fomc to hike interest rate we're also not seeing a significant gain on gold here so this one here is currently uh in in a weird situation it's not really driven by safe haven assets um the need for safe haven it is also not driven by and the market realizing that the FOMC is probably not going to be hiking interest rates. So this is actually going nowhere. And I don't like that situation because we don't actually have a driver for gold. This is going to, this is likely going to be in a range bound market condition. So just keep that in mind. Now, finally, we have oil, right? Oil traded below that orange box, which is something we talked about last week as well. It's traded below $80. I look at the progression for oil here. It has actually broken through the structure twice i.e it confirms that it's actually in a downtrend at this point in time now i you can see the um the marked up zone there is a red box and a green box that's going to be a premium zone as well as your discount zone we are currently above the, um we are currently within that premium zone now if this is currently trending to the downside when it goes into the premium zone at about 61.8% to 78.6% retracement, market is probably going to be looking for an opportunity to short it instead of buying it. So I don't expect price to go beyond the swing high, which is located close to about $80. At uh, this point in time, I expect around $78 to be the resistance and if it fails at 78 dollars that's going to be sellers that's going to come into the market and push price down so this is currently within a very clear downtrend for oil at this point in time all right so don't forget um the webinar is not going to be this week webinars next week all right but if you like what you see and you like how simple it is you can mark up your charts make it clear in terms of what price is doing make sure you mark your calendars we're going to start that webinar on the 28th of november 2023 this is going to be a five-part series so make sure you join in and get all the full benefits here so you can actually mark up all this stuff in the chart and gives you a much better clear understanding of where the direction is in the market with that good luck with your trades and i'll see you soon